Dorothea Lange contracted polio at the age of seven, which left her with a weakened leg and a permanent limp. At the age of 12, her father abandoned the family, and Dorothea was left on her own to figure out how to get by and make a life for herself. She set up a photo studio on the second floor of a building in San Francisco and developed a lucrative practice. One day, she looked out the window and saw a procession of men standing in a long bread line. Seeing this image of the poor was transformative for Dorothea. She sensed her oneness with them, her oneness with their vulnerability. In her own words, she called it a shock of recognition, a shock of recognition, of rethinking, a moment to reconsider what we can and should do for our fellow humans. She soon sold her successful portrait studio and went to work for the Farm Security Administration documenting the lives of sharecroppers and migrant workers. Her images of the poor and the forsaken brought their plight to the public attention, and her photographs became icons of a new era. One day at the end of a long work day, she was exhausted and driving back to the motel when she saw a sign on the side of the road pointing to a migrant camp. It was a moment of choice for her, and because she was so exhausted, she chose no. Too tired to take any more photographs, she kept driving on. Mile after mile, she drove down the road until some force inside her caused her to turn around and find her way to that migrant camp. It was there she discovered Florence Owens Thompson the migrant mother whose picture has become most famous and most recognized. Dorothea says about that day, she had just sold the tires from her car to buy food. When Lang provided the photographs to the editor of a San Francisco newspaper and told him the story of the conditions at the camp, he informed federal authorities and published the story. As a result, the government rushed aid to the camp to prevent starvation. Dorothea's photographs of the wounded body of a nation wounded the very heart of the nation, urging response from the cultural creatives. Upon seeing a collection of her photos, one man broke down in empathy. This is my human family. I want to help, but what can I do? I am only a writer. But it was John Steinbeck. Dorothea's images fueled his work, and when Grapes of Wrath was being read by the nation, another man, reading the novel, felt the pain of the migrants and called out of his own pain, what can I do? I want to help. These are my brothers and sisters, but I'm only a filmmaker. And that was John Ford, who directed the movie, Grapes of Wrath. John Ford directed a film that was seen by hundreds of thousands of people across the United States. And as a result of their emotions, as a result of their understanding of the plight of these farmers and unsettled peoples, they lobbied Congress, they wrote letters, they caused legislation to occur that is still in effect today. These citizens changed the fabric of this culture because of their commitment to the well being of other citizens. Lang never thought of her work as art. She saw her photos as a way to affect change, as illustrations for the American narrative that was unfolding tragically for some. Lang was a storyteller, 
and she told the story not so much to inform us but to move us and move us she did and that is the power of Dorothea Lang's work and that is the power of our stories that we have seen what we have seen and it has informed our conscience and our consciousness and as global citizens now we are called to translate that story into other forms into pictures into new stories into literature into songs into poems into theater into dance so that we can continue to create a culture that is changed and informed by our response to these times that's the call to every one of us as a creator to every person here in these seats your eyes have seen what they've seen so that you can reveal the story behind it this is our time and we are the ones. <laughs>